So today's message title is, I Wish I Would Have Known. How many of you guys have had that regret? You look back at your life and go, man, if I only had known then what I know now, life would have been completely different. I wouldn't have made the mistakes or at least some of the mistakes I did. I wouldn't have sold that house. I would have hung on to that house. Man, that was one of my regrets. Come on, I'm going to keep it real. You know, Veronica and I, we bought our first home when early on in our marriage. And guys, you guys want to know how much we bought the house for? Somebody said, yeah, $82,000. Come on, yo. Like our mortgage was like 763 bucks. And I regret that we sold that house. I wish that at that time I had known something that I know now, but didn't know then that caused us to actually make a move that we could have actually avoided. We could still have that house as a rental property, but you know what? I regret that we don't. And I would venture to say that many of you in this place today, you have some regrets. You have some things that you wish that you can take back. And usually it's connected to the fact that you don't have the knowledge and the wisdom at the time that you need to make the right decision. And I believe that today God's going to shake that up. You know, I've made many mistakes. I've done some embarrassing things because I just didn't know. Like one time at church, I went to this woman with great enthusiasm as I'm, you know, usually got some good energy. And I said, man, are you having a girl or a boy? And she goes, oh, I'm not pregnant. I was like, oh, I didn't know. And that was super embarrassing. Anybody, come on, I'm not alone. Anybody ever do that? Okay, there's more hands up in second service than first service. Last service, I was like, dang, I'm, I'm messed up. You know, one time, you know, we owned a heating and air company and and I walked into this customer's house, and she had two really dark black eyes, man. Her nose was swollen. I was like, man, her husband's abusing her. And I remember thinking all these thoughts about this guy. And, and even, even in the moment, I'm thinking, I'm going to ask her, hey, are you okay? Like, blink twice. No, I'm just kidding. No. And then, and then just before, I mean, I'm serious. Like, it was moments before. She goes, hey, I'm really sorry that I look this way. She said, you know, I, I took my bandages off. And she said, you know, I just had a nose job, you know, and... And uh, here I am, you know, had I stepped out, I'm like, come on, man, we're going to get this guy. You know, that would have been really dumb. But that decision and even me entertaining those thoughts, it was based on me not knowing something. I didn't know the facts. I wasn't aware. And today I, I believe that God wants us to travel down as we journey through the word of God and understand that if we press in to know the truth, if we press in to know his will and his way, we are going to avoid a lot of regretful situations. And so we're going to be talking about, I wish I would have known. You know, when I look at my own life, and I'm going to be transparent as I always am, there's, there's things when I look at it, earmarks in like big points, big parts of my life. I go, man, like I wish I would have known more about myself before I got married. I think I would have been a better husband early on. I wish that before we had kids that I had known more about parenting. I wish that, that before making investments and doing things business-wise and, and even managing finances, that there's some things that I would have known, but because I didn't know those things, it actually created a lot of situations and scenarios that brought shame, embarrassment, brought stress, brought calamity, missed opportunities. And, and so today I want to help you avoid that. When we're going to be in this series titled, I wish I would have, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things that we can actually implement through the word of God to avoid living a life full of regrets. You know, as I look at my own life, there's some things that I wish that I wouldn't have not done. You know, I regret not being healthy. You know, physically, there was a time where I was about 52 pounds heavier than I am now. And I remember being young, and I went on a hike with my daughter, and I literally thought I was going to die. Come on. I never told you that, babe. But, <laughs> but my son was there, and he could tell I was dying. I regret not taking care of my body when I was younger in some ways. I regret not being healthy internally. That, that I cause great pain because of my issues. Some of you, you're in that same place. You carry a lot of trauma and some drama everywhere you go because of your issues. And you regret the things that you say. You regret the things that you've done. You regret the relationships that you've been involved in and the way that some of your friendships have ended, some of the ways that a marriage may have ended. And you're like, man, like, we could have worked through that and we ended it. Like, ah, oh, man, like, I regret, like, because then I moved on to something else was actually worse. You know, and you regret these situations. You know, I regret in my own life, you know, my pride. 
I regret the times that, that I have not treated people well. I regret the times that I haven't listened well. I regret the times that, that I haven't valued what others had to say. I regret some of the ways I parented. There were times that I was too, too snappy. I was too quick. I was frustrated. There were times I was too harsh. I said things that I, I needed to say, but I said them the wrong way. Can anybody identify with that today? I regret you know, being easily offended. I remember being overly competitive with people. And if I felt that if anybody was creeping up on my spot, my position, I would, you know, go into this offense mode, like, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Step up on my stuff. I regret being overly emotional. Anybody regret living on the emotional, you know, emotional roller coaster? What I'm talking about is that you let your highs get too high and you let your lows get too low. I regret that because I made some of the worst decisions out of emotion. I've regretted how I've managed money at times. There's been times where I've been poor and impulsive with my financial decisions. There's things that I sold that I should have kept. There's things that I shouldn't have bought because they proved after to be worthless. But here's what I want you to know today. That although I've got regrets and although that you have regrets here today, that I've discovered that through Christ, he can flip the script. That on, when it comes to regret, that he can make a masterpiece out of my mishaps. Do you realize that, that he can make a masterpiece out of all of your mistakes, that he could take it and flip the script? It's like, wow, like this thing looks like it's going off the rails. All of this is bad. All of this is horrible. And God has a way of taking your regrets and your mistakes and all of the mishaps, and he turns it into this thing called wisdom, if you allow him to. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And so today, there's something that you need to know. There's something that you need to know. There's something that I need to know because this is really important. Remember I said that many times we make big mistakes because we just didn't know. How many of you guys have made some mistakes because you just didn't know? You didn't know better at the time. You're raised in a different family and you weren't raised. Maybe you'll say, man, my mom and dad didn't raise me right. You know, they were jacked up, you know, tore up from the floor up. You know, we were a mess. We were a, a, a disaster. Okay, well, maybe that's your story. But I want you to know that today, through the word of God, you can know something different. And I want to impart that to you. So I'm going to take you to a passage that's going to become the anchor point of today and the anchor point of this series. And it might rub some of you guys wrong, but that's okay. I love what my old pastor, Pastor Jim Cobra, used to say. Man, if you rub the cat the wrong way, he says, you don't stop rubbing them a different way. Don't rub them a different way. You just turn the cat around, you know. And for some of us, that's what we need to do is that you feel rubbed wrong by the word of God. God's not, his word's not going to change. You're the one that needs to change. You need to change direction, course correct. And so that's where we're going to go today. Come on, you can give him a praise. And if that hurts some of your feelings, we'll pray for you after. So it's all good. So if you would go with me to Proverbs 26, verse 11. It says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. As a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. You know, Veronica and I, we had this dog. Um, when our kids were about eight and nine years old, we decided that we were going to have our first family pet. And so we purchased this little female boxer, and we named her Zoe. Can I get a little picture? She was super cute. So this, this was Zoe. She used to like to attack sprinklers, and it would totally drown her, and water's blowing out of her nose and her ears and everything else, man. But she just couldn't help but attack sprinklers. And, um, and of course, chew everything else up and jump. I mean, if you've ever had a boxer, they're one of the best dogs, but one of the craziest schizo nuts dogs as well. And, um, but, but there was something about this dog that, 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 I, that I witnessed a few times, I observed a few times in her lifetime. One day, I could sense that she wasn't feeling well. She's kind of lethargic and laying around. And next thing I know, I hear her like, in the backyard, and she's like hacking stuff up. And she throws up, but then I go to clean it up, and I'm trying to drive her and push her away from it. And she's literally fighting me and, like, trying to guard her vomit. You know what she did? She ate it. That's nasty, yo. Come on. Some of you guys, oh, well, that's just what dogs do. No, guys, that's nasty, man. They shouldn't be doing that. But, but I, I think that, that there, there's a story, if we can get back to that scripture, that we see that, that as a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly that dogs have this propensity to re-ingest or ingest the very thing that was making them sick in the first place. And what I want you to get today is that many of you are living with deep regrets in your life because you keep returning to the things that are making you sick. You keep returning to your pride. You keep returning to your lust. You keep returning to that affair. You keep returning to these different things, to, to, to you know, your emotional instability. You keep returning to these things, and you know what it is? It's vomit. 
It's vomit. It's the very thing that, that was making you sick in the first place, and you keep partaking of it. You keep partaking. It's like you return to that addiction. You return to that, that substance. You return to that relationship that you shouldn't have. You keep returning to it. There's this propensity for us as humans when we are caught up in carnality to keep returning to the very thing that is making us sick. Bad behaviors, stinking thinking, toxic relationships. We're listening to the wrong voices, lying, stealing, cheating, uncontrollable anger. There's all these things that we have this draw that just pulls us back. And I want to just simply say this to you today, that you can be free. That you can be free. You no longer need to be bound. Through Jesus Christ, he has paid the price. He has overcome sin. He has overcome death for you and I. He has made a way for us to walk a new path that we don't need to walk backwards. We don't need to keep returning to our folly, making mistakes and going, why did I do this again, man? Like, why am I with this guy? Why do I always pick the wrong guy? Why do I always pick the wrong girl? It's because you keep returning to your vomit. You keep returning to your folly. You're not doing anything different, but you're Expecting different results. And today, through God's word, I want to challenge you that, that and, and enlighten you because maybe you don't know that the things you're doing are actually the things that are making you sick, that your eyes are open to a reality that God has given you ability to part ways, that you don't need to go backwards, but you can now go forward. Would you just simply turn your neighbor and say, I'm not going back. I'm going forward. Turn to your second favorite neighbor, the one you don't know, and just say, I'm not going back, and I'm going forward. Thank you for your participation class. <laughs> I got three things I want to share with you today that I wish I would have that actually break the cycle of regret. Three things that I wish I would have that break the cycle of regret. Number one is this, is that I wish I, that someone would have told me the truth. I wish that someone would have told me the truth. Do you realize that often we sink into isolation? And here's the reality is many of us are very uncomfortable with hearing the truth and receiving the truth. You know, the Bible says that the truth shall what? Set you free. I believe the truth that you live is what sets you free, not just the truth you know. There's a lot of people that know the right things to do, but don't do it. So you don't live free. And here's the reality is that we need people to come into our lives. We need to give people an opportunity to speak to the blind spots in our lives. Do you realize that many of us have blind spots? You know, we're thinking like we're jamming, man. We're the cat's pajamas, the bee's knees up in this place. And the reality is that we all have some brokenness. We have some areas that God's working on. But actually, one of the things that's most detrimental are the blind spots because you don't see them. How many of you guys have ever changed lanes into something? Like, oh, oh, I didn't see them. And they're all honking and flipping you off. And you're like, man, like I didn't try to get off on a bad start today. But man, now my, my, my heart rate's up and I'm a little upset. Well, you're the one that caused that because you had a blind spot. It wasn't their fault. They're the honking the horn. Yeah, they're a little upset now. But, but here's the reality is that then what do we do? We have this propensity to blame them. But in reality, we're the ones that return to our vomit. And so we need to break that cycle. And so I wish somebody would have told me the truth. You know, I had a really interesting situation happen. This was maybe last year. I was, I was on the tee box on, on hole one. And there was this gentleman who, you know, I was golfing with. And, and, you know, I found out that he was a deacon from another church, spiritual leader. How did I know? Because he heard them call me Pastor Steve. So he had to let me know, man. I'm a man of the cloth. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a leader, man. I, I, I teach up in church. You know, he was, he was all into his thing, you know, needed me to know his position. But here's the sad thing is that this guy was completely oblivious to what a jerk he is and how rude and how nasty and mean he is. I'm going to tell you, he was one of the rudest people I've ever seen on the golf course. He treated the staff horribly. And as we're on that tee box, tee box one, we're about to tee off with four of us. There's a, there's a little old lady, really cute little old lady. She rolls up with her little pink golf bag on her cart. And she goes, hey, I'm just by myself. Is it okay if I play through? And he goes, no. He goes, you can play behind us. Well, I, I've got the first tee time. I, I paid for the first tee time, and I'm playing the first tee time. And he was ugly and mean and nasty to her. And uh, if you know Pastor Steve, I'm very kind, but, but sometimes, you know, a little bit of Sam Redino comes out of me, man. That's why I was born and raised. And so I'm sitting in my cart, and I stepped out, and I said, hey, bro. I said it just like that. Hey, bro, that, that's not, that's not going to work for me. 
I said, you, you could take that negativity somewhere else. And he looked at me and he, and he was just like, like, whoa, like he didn't expect that. Well, he didn't take it somewhere else. So for the next four rounds, the next four holes, it was really quiet and super awkward with everybody in our group. And guys were kind of like talking underneath their breath, like, man, dude, who is this guy? Blah, blah, blah. This is weird. We finished up the fourth hole, and here's, here's the point of the story. This guy had major blind spots. Is he saved? Yes. Is he restored? Not really. And was he returning to his vomit? Yes. Uncontrolled anger, demanding, mean, rude, nasty. That, that, that was returning to the old man, to the flesh. And he was creating situations of folly. And that day, as we talked, he regretted what he did on that tee box. Because when he made some kind of half-hearted attempt at an apology, we ended up talking for the next 14 holes about, about, and it actually was a life-giving conversation between us about blind spots. Because he couldn't see that, that because he had been overlooked and he was carrying some pain from a childhood and, and some people had rejected him and they had made him feel lower than. So now he was projecting that onto other people. He, he was being just, just like the people that treated him ugly. He became that person. But it was a blind spot, but yet it was him returning to his vomit. Because here's the reality, is that that dog, it sees the vomit as food, but it's the very thing that made it sick. It's not something that would nourish it. And let me say this to you today, is that you need to know, some of you need to know in this room, and this is a reality check for you, that what you're doing isn't working for you. It's working against you. That man thought that that kind of attitude was going to work for him. Why? Because he was used to using intimidation and nastiness to get his way. But that day when I stood up and said, hey, man, you're th no, th this is not how it's going to go. All of a sudden, it, his eyes opened up. You know what? I'm, I'm not living right. And that was the conversation later. I said, hey, man, that was a terrible witness, man. I said, you know, as a, as a man of God, I said, I get that we make mistakes. But I said, but I have to believe, my friend, that this is not the first time this has happened. I said, because you set off quick. And I said, and that was a lady. I said, here you are. You, you told me that you're a man of God in front of that starter. You told me that you're a man of God with these guys that we're playing with. And now nobody believes that you are. You are a poor representation of Christ and his life. And at the end of the day, I remember him saying, you know what, thank you for the conversation. And, and you know, is his life going to change? I don't know. But some of you need to know that the way that you're acting is inappropriate as a believer, that you are a misrepresentation of Christ. You returning to your vomit is not working for you. You coming into a place and saying, you know, Jesus gives life. And you're like, mm. it's like, let's worship. Like, I'll uh, give him a little hand. And God's not really transforming your life. You can't get past your pride. You can't get past your ego. You can't get past. Listen, these are the very things that are causing you to return. And it's time to break free of that stuff. It's time to move forward. It's time to come out of captivity and embrace a new way of thinking and living, my friend. So as your pastor, or if you're a visitor here today as a friend, I just want to say kindly that some of the things that you're embracing, that you're returning to, they're not working for you. It's time to part ways. It's not a part ways with some of those relationships. And this is what you do need to know, is that you can be free. You can be free. Some of you need to know today that there's hope and that you can overcome addiction. You can beat it. Maybe nobody in your family has, but let me tell you, by God's grace, you will. And you've got to know that. You've got to know the truth. You're believing some things that aren't the truth. And you need to know today that whom the sun sets free is free indeed, my friend. What you need to know is that you can break the generational cycles of poverty in your life. That, that you can pay your bills on time. Do you realize that? Do you realize that if you begin to abide in Christ and you begin to operate in wisdom and operate in his ways and put godly principles into effect, that you will live a life that is blessed. I'm not, I'm not a prosperity preacher, but I'm telling you that I do believe that God takes care of his kids. I do believe that God is a God who blesses, that God is a good God. He's a good father, that when we ask him for something that we need, that he gives it to us in great abundance. Why? Because he takes care of his own. We don't give to earn something. We, we give at, 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 as a, as, out of compulsion, out of, out of compulsion in the sense that it's like, I'm just compelled because you're so good to me. 
Why would I withhold anything? Why would I not trust everything with you? And so I'm just going to say that some of you, you are going to be the one that breaks that cycle. That you will go, man, we never had a savings account. Listen, you are going to be the one that's going to have a savings account. You're going to be the one that God is going to use to establish a budget to be blessed and that your generations will be blessed through you. Let me say this, that some of you, you do not need to live in toxic relationships. Let me tell you this, that God is going to make a way and that you're not going to live full of regrets of brokenness, broken homes, divorce, mess, and all kinds of stuff that you are the one that God is going to use. And if you've already entered into that season, God is a God that restores, he mends, and he repairs. And you know what he does is that many times when we open our mouths and we begin to share our testimonies, our kids will be the ones that he actually restores through them because we say, hey, hey. Let me tell you something that I didn't know that has caused regret. And I'm going to tell you so then that way you don't trip up and fall into that hole, into that pit. And that in many ways, because I am going to bring wisdom into this situation, that your, their, their basement is actually your ceiling. You guys see what I'm saying? That they get to start where you left off. But we've got to be a people that are wise Got to be a people that are wise. We're not going to be foolish. We're not going to return to our folly and living a life of regret because there are some things that we need to know. Some of you, you're going to overcome. You're going to be the first one to break that chain of bitterness and resentment in your family. You're going to be a person that lives with forgiveness. You're going to dive into Freedom Group, and you're going to learn how to forgive. You're going to learn how to write letters. You're going to learn how to not be entangled with the past. You're going to walk free. You're going to get into small groups and confess and be open and honest. You're going to get into CR. You're going to get free of addiction. You're going to get free of those things that abound and destroy generations. You are the one. You need to know something different, that if you abide in Christ, you have been given the power and the authority to overcome sin, wickedness, death, and all this stuff that brings calamity and brings destruction to your generations. You know, I was, I was thinking about this the other day when it comes to forgiveness. Some of you need to get this. I'm going to give you a fresh perspective because I've had people, I've, I've, we've been preaching forgiveness for, for 23 years now. And some people are like, yeah, I'm just not ready to forgive. I'm not, just, I'm, I'm not ready to let him go. And then I'm like, why would you not? Because here's the thought is that imagine being bit by a snake. And instead of trying to help heal yourself and recover from the poison, you try to catch the snake to find out the reason it bit you and prove that you didn't deserve that. That's how some of you are living your life. And I believe that some of you are going to break this cycle. That you're not going to be chasing snakes because what do snakes do? Snakes bite. You're not going to be chasing sinners because what do sinners do? Sinners sin. You're going to be chasing a, a, a godly generation. You're going to be chasing godly people. You're, you're starting something new. You're no longer focused on, oh, I'm going to try to figure out why my dad left us. I'm going to try to figure out why my ex cheated. I'm going to try. No, forget all of that. You make your focus healing, reaching out to the healer, the only one that can heal and restore and redeem your life and correct your story. That's the focus is I'm going to focus on getting healed from the poison that was injected into me. And I'm not going to focus on that. There's, listen to me. For some of you, you, you have gone back to your vomit over and over and resentment and bitterness is your vomit. You go back and back and back because you're trying to make sense of something that will never make sense. Listen to me. Sin does not make sense because it's not of God. It's forgiveness and healing that makes sense because it's only something that God can do. It's in his character. It's in his nature. It's one of his attributes. Here's the second thing I want to share. Are you guys getting something out of this? Come on, I feel God's moving in this place. The second thing when it comes to breaking that cycle of regret is not only do you need to know something that you didn't know, but that, that I wish I would have pursued godly knowledge. You need a different skill set. You need a different perspective. You need different knowledge, okay? And this is the thought that if I... If I must know better to do better, then pursuing knowledge is the prerequisite for progress. Because here's the reality that if what you know is causing you to return to your vomit, then you need to you need knowledge that is not something that or knowledge is that you don't currently possess is what I'm trying to say. So if all I know makes me go back to here. And that's all I know, so I just keep returning. I just keep returning. I just keep returning. I need to know something different that helps me go that way. Are you guys picking this up? 
I need something that, and, and if you don't possess that knowledge, you're going to keep returning. And I'm not talking about just a worldly knowledge. Oh, yeah, I got to get into another therapy class. I got to get into another psychology class. I need to get into, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. You need to get into the word of God. You need godly knowledge, godly wisdom in your life. And that's why in Proverbs 4, it says this. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. It says, do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. What he's saying is, man, when you live according to God's wisdom, you're protected, you're covered. It says, love her and she will watch over you. You mean like you have somebody watching over you. And this is obviously, this is figurative. It says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. That's the beginning. He already said it two times, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding, cherish her, and it will, and she will exalt you, and embrace her, and she will honor you. Do you realize that to get something, that that's actually, that's an action? It's not a reaction. It's not like it's just going to land on you and just dump on you, boom, you know, like, oh, awesome, had a light bulb moment. No, get means that you have to go. You have to go in search of. You've got to pursue something. You, you've got to go do something that you've never done to get something that you've never had. This is what it's actually saying, is that you need to get wisdom. But it says something here that I don't want you and I don't want to overlook myself. It says, though it costs all you have, get it. Though it costs all you have. And this is the thing, is that wisdom is costly. Wisdom is costly. Why? Because you get wisdom by living life and making a bunch of mistakes. Or you can get wisdom on loan. I'm going to tell you, that's a great option. And how do you get wisdom on loan? Is that you connect yourself. You anchor yourself to people, godly people, that have lived through your situation already. And they're willing to impart to you. They're willing to share. That if you want to live a different life, if you're tired of being broke, busted, and disgusted, you got to start living around and connect to people that are successful monetarily. And you might say, hey, man, I don't got much, but can I take you to coffee, you know, and uh, don't get anything extra? No, I'm just messing. <laughs> can't, can't, <laughs> I'm just messing around. <laughs> we might have to scratch that. Of course, I'm messing around. But, but can I take you to coffee, and can I just pick your brain on a few things? You know, I see some of you in here, and I'm not going to point you out, but there's a few of you that I, I get texts sometimes, and they'll say, hey, pastor, I was just wondering, I wanted to pick your brain on this. Hey, I was just thinking, I had this idea, and I want to run something by you. What are they doing? They have found a well or a source where somebody has something that they don't yet have, but they hope to someday, and what they're doing is they're reaching out in hopes that that person will share and impart to them something that they have not yet received. That means that they're going to get something. They're getting wisdom. They're getting, getting knowledge. Are you guys getting this? They're getting understanding. And why is it so costly? Why? Because, like I said, you got to live through some stuff to get it. But if somebody's willing to loan it to you, they're willing to impart to you, guys, that is a great thing. But here's what you're going to, this is what it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your time, Sometimes it's going to cost you resources because you're going to have to pay for a meal. You're going to have to pay for something. And, and it's going to cost you your pride. Do you realize that so many people, they don't learn. They don't step outside the box. They keep returning to their vomit because they become so comfortable with that. Like, it's like, well, my life isn't great, but it's not as bad as my mom's was. Well, my life's not as great, but it's, you know, at least I'm better than my, most of my family. Guys, you're not trying to be better than most of your family. You're trying to live a, a life that honors God and that you are living in, 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 in order with his plan for you. We're not living measuring ourselves up to, well, at least it's not as bad. No, it says that Jesus Christ came that we'd have life and life more abundantly. I want to live in that place. If my vomit has me over here, like, oh, well, I got life, and I'm just trying to make it through until heaven comes, you know, until I die. Like, come on, that's not what Christ paid the price for. He paid the price for you to move and to go get what you need, get understanding, get wisdom. I'm going to move over here, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. Listen, if you don't do that, you're going to live a life full of regrets. A lot of shoulda, coulda, would have. Man, you know what? We just rented and, you know, man, it would have been cool if we had owned a house. You got to figure out what is it going to take to do that. So it's going to make you uncomfortable. You got to step out. Oh, you know, we always had a, a used car that we just prayed and hoped it started every day. Sure would be nice to have one of those new ones. Well, you need different knowledge. You need something different. Of course, I'm talking money, and that makes some of you guys uncomfortable. 
But I'm talking relationships too. So you're like, well, you know, man, our relationship, my wife and I, it just sucks, man. We fight all the time and she leaves and then comes back and then I get drunk and then we just like fight it out and then we kiss and make up and then we, and we're just trapped in this cycle. I guess that's just our lot in life and it's better than my dad and my mom's relationship because they divorced when I was only two. Listen, you don't need to accept that. You need to know something different, but not only that, you need different knowledge that you don't possess right now. You need a wisdom from upon high that you don't have yet, but God is making it available to you. You just got to reach out. You got to go after it. Connect with people. Get in church. Get in your word. Listen to a podcast. Do whatever you have to do to gain knowledge so you can live differently. And here's the application of that, is that knowledge alone is not the ending point. Knowledge is, is information, but what you need is wisdom. And what wisdom is, is it's knowledge applied. There's a lot of people that know a lot, but they don't know how to apply it. And I believe that if you walk and abide in the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you, and he's going to say, uh, 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 don't say that. Your mom, but my mom used to say, no, no. Do you want what your mom had? Or do you want something different? Don't say that. I'm going to smack my kids really hard and just take out all my anger on them. No, ah, no, you're not going to do that. But that's what my mom and dad did to me. But do you want what they had? Do you, do you want your kids to feel the brokenness of the abuse that you endured? Or do you want something different? Oh, I need to learn how to parent differently. I need to learn how to do a marriage differently. I need to learn how to do my finances differently. I need to learn how to follow God differently because my mom and dad were a bunch of hypocrites. They faked people out like they were close to God, but they lived differently during the week. Well, do you want what they had or do you want something different? You're going to have to go after another, you know, a different knowledge, but then you've got to learn and walk with the Holy Spirit to apply it every single day. Here's the third thing as we close out. If I can get you up, Pastor Joe, that'd be great. Is that I wish I would have responded wisely. You know, as I said, with wisdom, we, we go after knowledge and then we try to apply it. And here's the thing is that, you, you know what I love here? I remember one time, uh, you know, when we, we were at The Rock for 16 years and Pastor Jim was my pastor. And I remember one time, somebody was snickering and laughing next to me because this person kept answering the altar call every time. And I talked to Pastor Jim about it because I used to do business with him. He was a great man and he was a very honorable and integrous man, especially when he came to finances and doing business with people. Did business with him for 10 years and he was so good to us. And I asked him about it in a sideline conversation. I said, hey, that those people, like they're always raising their hands to get saved and And like, aren't they already saved? And he goes, yeah. He goes, but you know what I love? He goes, I love that their heart's still sensitive and responsive to the Lord. And sometimes we have regrets and we make mistakes and we jack stuff up royally. And we make a big old mess. But let me tell you this, that if you don't handle regret properly, you'll run from God. But if you're wise with your response to him and his correction, his gentle correction, and sometimes it's a little bit harsh, but if you respond to it and you're pliable and you're soft, your life will change. They may not change right away, but you're going to start to notice a difference. Like I said, when he goes, oh, you want to be snappy with your words? You, you, you want to you wanna put down your kids? You want to cut your husband down on his knees? And, and the Holy Spirit goes, don't, ah. Uh, and you go, man, God, I don't know how to say anything different. I just, I get so mad and like my words just, I want to let them go. It makes me feel, uh. And he goes, just take a deep breath. Say a quick prayer. Some of you, you're, you're tempted with lust and you're like, I just don't know how to overcome lust. I just, oh man, I just feel compelled. I just, I can't not look at it. I can't. But if you'll be pliable and surrender every moment, every thought to the Lord and just say, God, I am so struggling with this. I want to call my old girlfriend up. I want to call my old boyfriend up. I, I just want, I want to connect. I want to hook up because I feel so alone. And the Holy Spirit's going, no, 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 no. You're going to regret that. 
You're going to regret that. Don't, don't do it. Go get up. Get in the word right now. Call somebody. Go somewhere else. Go for a walk. Do whatever you got to do. And the Holy Spirit's going to lead you and you're going to start making different decisions. But that all comes from this place of responding wisely and walking in the Spirit. And when you walk in the Spirit, you deny the flesh. For some of you, you've lived a lifetime of returning to the vomit, always satisfying the flesh, and you live with deep regrets. And I want you to know that you can be free of that today. What is your response to him? What is your response? What's the response to the wisdom? In Proverbs 1, 28 through 32, I'm going to finish with this. It says, when they cry out for help, I will not answer. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me. Man, this is a desperate place. This is actually really sad. God going, you're looking for me, you ain't going to find me. And he says, why? He says, for they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. It says, they rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way. Are you living and eating the bitter fruit of your choices today? I'm going to tell you, man, vomit's bitter. Don't taste good at all. What is our response? Are we quick to obey? Are we quick to hear God? Are we quick to move? Or do we drag our feet in our heels Listen to this, this choking on their own schemes. It says, for simpletons turn away from me to death. You got to get this. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. Let me end with this thought today. Are you going to wisely respond to the Lord? Or are you going to be one that is foolish in the sense that you are going to be complacent? And God is saying today, I don't want you to return to that relationship. I don't want you returning to that place. You keep finding yourself in that bar thinking that somehow you're not going to get drunk. You keep finding yourself over at the strip club and somehow you're not going to end up doing something that is dishonoring to your family and to God. You keep finding yourself in these places doing things and you're just like, I don't know how to overcome. Listen, it's all in your response today. Are you going to respond in a way that, that is favorable and sensitive to the Lord and let him correct some things in you? Let him speak advice through his word and maybe through a pastor or a confidant or a close friend or one of the programs that we have here. That somebody's going to speak life and you're going to say, you know what? I don't want to do that. But they obviously know something that I don't know. And I want something different than I've been having, so I'm going to embrace it. What's your response today?